So it is like almost three in the morning right now. I am currently in editing troll mode, which means I am completely in sweatpants. Got my Starbucks and my homebrewed tea over there. I am about to teach you how to edit video like a bleeping wizard in under an hour. By the time you finish watching this video, you're gonna know how to edit so much faster, so much easier. If you watch this video, the minutes you spend watching it will pay out in exponential hours saved during editing. All of my knowledge distilled into one video. I also guarantee that this video will be applicable to anyone who wants to edit in Final Cut Pro, whether you're making YouTube shorts or adult films, like anything that you're making in Final Cut Pro, this will help you do it faster and easier. I am super excited to share it with you guys. I hope that you guys get a lot out of it and I hope that this improves your editing skills and speed. I've included timestamped topics in the description box so you guys can just skip ahead to whatever topics you want to cover or you can watch it all the way through whatever you want to do. So stay tuned, you're going to get a whole lot out of this and I put a whole lot of time into making this tutorial as jam-packed with time-saving information as possible, so keep watching. The first thing you guys need to know is how to set up the interface for maximum efficiency. So the options that I like to have clicked on are going to be these options that are highlighted in blue. You can access those in the menu bar. So you want to go to Window, Show in Workspace, Sidebar, Browser, Inspector, Timeline should all be highlighted. The View I am going to have in Browser. Clip names, waveforms, marked ranges, used media ranges, skimmer info, continuous playback. I want all of this selected in the browser. You also want on the bottom here, skimming, clip skimming, audio skimming, and snapping to all be highlighted. Um, you can also access these features from this bar right here. These are the options in particular that I like to have selected. This is where you import your media and all the media that you've uploaded that you need to edit and work on will show up here. This is gonna be wherever your skimmer is at. And then this is, area is the inspector which you can turn on and off with this button. So I'm gonna go to import media. For speed, on the side, this in particular is really, really helpful. Analyze video for color balance and then analyze and fix audio problems. So I'm gonna import that file. Now that I've imported my footage, I'm going to show you guys the power of having the correct views turned on. So if you click on this little film strip looking thing right here, for waveforms, you really, really want waveforms checked off, and I'll show you why. This is the power of waveforms. Waveforms show you the audio. So you'll know where there's sound and where there's no sound. So that's really helpful for cutting dead footage or dead air. So the next thing that's super, super important for editing with efficiency is to have shortcut keys. And you do that by going to Final Cut Pro menu. You go to Commands and Customize. So the basic shortcut keys I think everyone should have, and they can be any keystrokes you want, but you should have a shortcut for these actions. Um, in particular, these following tools, the Blade tool, the Crop tool, the Select tool should all have shortcut keys because you're gonna be using them all the time and you don't wanna keep clicking, you wanna be able to bam, press one button and have it do that. After that, I feel like the most important shortcut keys are going to be setting your range. So set range end is O and set range start is I for in and out. And then for undo, that's a really important one that everyone should have. You also want to have a shortcut for zoom in and zoom out. 
The following shortcuts are also super important for when you are marking up your footage. A marker basically visually tags your footage. It'll give you the ability to at a glance know what points in your footage are useful to use. So set a shortcut for marker. Also, you want to set shortcuts for keywords. And the keyword editor will let you customize your keyword tag. I made all of my keywords command one through nine. I'm going to show you the power of that later. The next shortcut key family that is going to really speed up your editing process is going to be defaults. So I like to set default effects and default transitions. Add default transition. It adds the transitions for me. And then the next one that I really love is add default video effect. I can save that video effect and then apply that with one keystroke to all of my footage. Once you set up your short keys, you want to click save and then close this. And then all of your shortcut keys will be set up. So now we've set up the interface to be as visually helpful as possible. And we've set up a bunch of customized short keys so that we can edit and execute actions on Final Cut Pro with as much efficiency as possible. So next we are going to actually start editing some footage. Now to start, editing, you want to start a new project. So click new project. And I'm going to call this how to edit. And over here, you can specify the video specs. I'm personally going to render this in 1080 PhD. You can choose the resolution. I like to be at 1920 by 1080. And you can also choose the frame rate. Okay, so now that we have started a new project down here. It's blank because we haven't dropped any of our raw footage into it. Um, we are going to start going through the raw footage and watching it to see what parts we want to use. And to start playing the raw footage, you want to hover over the area that you want to start playing it at and push the space bar. After you push the space bar and you want to pause it, you can push the space bar again. So use space bar to play and pause the footage. And let's say I'm watching this and I'm like, you know what? I really want to use this section of footage. I really want to start using the footage that starts here. Play it and I'm going to push I. See how when I pushed I, it brought up that yellow marker? That yellow marker is telling Final Cut Pro what ranges of the footage I want to use. And I is the shortcut key that I set to start the range. The shortcut key to end the range is O, and I am going to end the range when I feel like, you know, oh, I want to stop it right here. So now that we've set a range to use, using the shortcut keys I and O, I can go ahead and drag that range into our project. So I'm just going to click and drag that. Now let's say there is something special about this range where I'm like, you know what, I should know this about this footage later. You are going to use keywords or markers. So let's say I want to use a marker to mark all of the areas that I'm like, oh, you know what, this is a blooper. I'm going to hover over the area and use that shortcut key for marker, which is M. Push M and see where I was hovering. It put that little purple tick right there. And so the, I know, oh, if I go back to that marker, that's a place that I can take still footage from. I can also use keywords for this function. So let's say I want to set a keyword for this range that I've selected. I'm going to bring up the keyword editor by hitting the, com the shortcut key command K. That brings up my keyword editor and you can customize all your keywords. I like to use stills for places that I should grab still picture frames from. I like to use GIFs to mark the places that I should be grabbing GIFs from. Then I can also have a keyword for bloopers for, you know, if I want to look at bloopers later and you can set up to nine custom keywords so that, you know, you have all the information you need about your footage. And the keyword shortcuts are right here next to them. For mine are command one, command two, command all the way up to nine. I want to use this section for GIFs. I am going to use the shortcut key command three 
and that'll set the keyword. And you know there's a keyword there because that blue line showed up. The keyword gifts showed up down here. So when I click that keyword, just the areas that have tagged with that keyword will show up. Another really important visual thing is going to be this orange bar. This orange bar signifies that you have used this footage already. That means I have taken this footage and dropped it into my project. So that's also really useful. So you can see at a glance like, oh, I've used that part. Oh, I've keyworded that part. Oh, I've put a marker on that part. So those are really helpful visual keys. So let's keep watching this footage and seeing what I want to edit from it. Now I'm going to just go through this whole thing and mark the places that I want to use using the INO shortcut keys and dragging them down. Let's say I think I look really cute in this frame. I can use that marker function again to mark where I can take the stills from. So I'm going to push M put a marker right there, puts that little purple tick up there so I know where to take pictures from. And let's say I really like this whole range so I can use it for GIFs later. I can set a keyword for that by pushing Command 3 and that will apply my keyword. And you know that because there's a blue line up there which means there's a keyword applied to that range. And basically you're going through, you're keywording, marking up, and selecting areas that you want to use. So now that you've cut up all of your raw footage and inserted the parts you want to use into your project, you can further fine tune the footage. So I push the space bar to start playing my project. I am going to pause right where I want to cut and I'm going to click B. Remember B was our blade tool and that will turn into a little razor blade icon and you can go in and the B tool will let you cut it. So I just cut that footage there. Then I'm going to toggle over to the select tool by pushing A and that will change my cursor to the select tool and I can select that footage and delete it. So you see how powerful it is to have shortcut keys for blade and select. Just being able to switch between those as quickly as you want as opposed to going up here, selecting the select tool, selecting the blade tool, it's much easier to have shortcut keys. So let's keep watching this and keep picking out areas that we want to further trim. You can also move through your footage by frame by clicking the left and right buttons. Left to go to the left, right to go to the right, and that will let you really fine tune by frame where you want to cut your footage. One of the first things I like to do when I am editing my cut footage, I like to start with cropping. I can use my shortcut key, which I've set to C. I just push C and it brings up that crop menu right here. You can also access it manually by pushing this button right here. And it also brings up the transform, crop, and distort options for crop. This is going to bring up Trim, Crop, and Ken Burns. Let's start with Crop because this is the easiest, the one that we all know. Let's crop it to my face and then hit enter and it crops to that section. There's also a Trim. It'll trim it to that section but it will leave that black frame around your footage. And then the last one that I really love is Ken Burns. Ken Burns is when it creates the effect of panning. So you see how there's a start frame and an end frame. Let's say for my start frame, I wanna start by looking at this view of me. And for the end frame, let's say I want to end with this view of me. It will create an effect where from beginning to end of the clip, it will pan down from this view to this view. So I just cr Ken Burns cropped that footage, hit the done key, and when I go back and play that footage, it will use your crop selections to create a panning effect. Transforming is when you are shrinking the footage or making it bigger. I will show you. Push transform. It will bring up and I can make it smaller, make it bigger. 
So let's say I want to crop out all of the footage that has this white corner in it. I can select the clip that I want to edit, hit my crop tool short key, which is C for me, brings up the crop menu, and then I can drag that down, drag it to where I want it. As I plan my project, I can see that it's all properly cropped. So now that we've cut up the raw footage and cropped it, we want to add some video effects. And you can access your video effects by clicking on this little button down here, and that'll bring up all of your color effects. And you know, you can blur it, you can turn it black and white, and there are a bunch of things you can do. But because I'm going to be working in the visual editing, I like to turn off some menus for this part. So I'm going to click this to hide that toolbar. I am also going to drag this to make this window smaller because I want to see as much of my footage as I can. So we can also shrink this down here. And then we are going to switch to fit. So now when you click on a piece of footage that you want to add video effects to, this inspector on the right hand side comes up. This is the inspector window. So the inspector window gives you the visual elements, the color board elements, the audio elements, and then your clip information. We're starting with video effects. So the first big video effect that I like to use is actually a plugin. You can use a lot of different plugins for Final Cut Pro to add different effects to your videos. The one I particularly like to use is called Magic Bullet Cosmo 2. And you can start a free trial. You download it for Mac OS X. And once you go through all of the installation for Magic Bullet Cosmo 2 in your effects menu on the list, when you scroll down, this will show up, Magic Bullet Suite. I like to use Cosmo 2. Cosmo 2 is the cosmetic correction uh, video effect. And I'm basically going to select that and I'm going to drag it over my first clip. And that loads Cosmo 2. If you go into the inspector window, this is going to show you all of the effects that are on that particular piece of footage. You can also see this visually by show video automation from the right click menu. So once you click show video animation, this little menu pops up and this shows you all of your different video effects that you've applied to that clip in particular. I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see them all. So right now this clip has all of these effects on it. You can actually select the entire project by using Command A, select all. And then from there, you can right click and do show video automation. And it will do that for every clip. So you can easily visually see on the project timeline what effects are being applied to which clips. Now, I've dragged this Cosmo 2 effect over this first clip. It's showing up here. And it's also showing up in this inspector window. Now. For Cosmo 2 to know what areas of your video to color correct and smooth out, you have to tell it. So you are going to do skin sample. You're going to click that color box and it'll bring up this color menu. You're going to go over to the dropper, click the dropper, and you are going to drag the dropper over to an area of your skin that you want to use as the overall tone for your color correction. So I'm going to use this color on my cheek and see how it changed it to that peach tone on my cheek. We can close that now. Now Cosmo 2 knows to use this color as the basis for all of the correction it's about to do. You are going to click show selection and that's going to show you what areas of the skin that it's going to color correct. And you can play with the selection by choosing selection offset to increase decrease the amount of color correcting it's going to do. And then you can also help select by playing with the tolerance setting. 
So the more tolerant it is, the more correcting it's going to do. And then I can click off show selection and then I can now skin smooth, play with all of these settings. So let's say I turn up the skin smoothing to a hundred. This will really blur out your skin. You can also play with the preserve detail, preserve contrast, sharpen texture, restore noise. I also like to turn auto skin color all the way up to 100. Skin yellow and pink, you can play with the tone of your skin as well on here. You can turn it all the way yellow, you can turn it all the way pink. And then I also like to turn up skin color unify all the way up to 100 so that it kind of evens out all of my skin tone. So now I've used the skin perfecting video effect on this part of my clip. Now there are many other effects you can use. Usually after that I like to go into color correction. This little thing adds a color board and then from here you can play with the color, saturation, and exposure. You can really use this to great effect. And this part is really just about playing with the settings, right? Lower the exposure, raise the exposure, saturation. Play with the settings to figure out how saturated, unsaturated in color you want to go. And you can see on your clip this color board section has been added in addition to the Cosmo 2. So I'm about to teach you something super powerful. So let's say I want to take that skin smoothing effect I applied to my first clip and the color board from this first clip and apply it to all of the rest of the clips. I am going to go over to this button called Save Effects Preset. And you can name your preset anything. I'm going to call it Skin Perfecting plus Color Board. And this will let you know which effects you want to save the preset for. I don't want to save the crop because the crop is a little different everywhere. But let's say I wanted to crop everything exactly the same as this clip. I could choose that. I'm going to save that color board effect. Now once you save it, go under Magic Bullet Suite and it shows up right here, Skin Perfecting and Color Board. So now that I've saved that preset, I can apply it to the rest of my clips. I can, by just dragging and dropping. I'm gonna apply it over here. See, I dragged and dropped it and now that effect, the Cosmo 2 and Color Board is showing up on there. So now we've taken an effect, we've made it into a preset so we can just easily drag and drop it onto everything. But let's take it a step further and make it even faster. We can make this even faster by making it a default. So set default. You want to hover over the effect that you want to make your default and click make default video effect. Now remember, all the way in the beginning, I created a short key, the short key E, for applying a default video effect. So all I have to do now is select all of the clips that I want to apply this to and click E. And it will apply those effects to everything. You can see over here on this menu, Cosmo 2, Color Board, all of these effects have been applied. So you can see how powerful this is in terms of saving time. You create a preset and then you turn that preset into a default effect and then you can use your short keys to apply that default effect to all of your footage. So now that I have color corrected and used video effects on all my footage, I can start putting in the transitions. And transitions are basically what happens when you go from one clip to the next and you access your transitions by using this button right here you can turn it on and off and there are a ton of different transitions again that you can play with and use i like to use cross dissolve and i'll show you exactly what cross dissolve does let's say i drag cross dissolve over here to use as the transition between these two clips when you play it you will see the cross dissolve see how it does that blurry thing into the next clip. So let's say I really like that effect and I want to use that same transition on every one of my clips. 
This is another really powerful, quick, time-saving thing you can do. You right-click and make default. I've made this my default transition. Now I'm going to use short keys to apply my default transition to this entire project. Default transition short key is Command T. So I'm going to push Command T and boom. It installs that transition onto all of my footage at the beginning and end of all of my clips. So now when you watch this, everything's going to have a nice cross dissolve effect. Fades in, cross dissolves into the next, cross dissolves again. So now that we have cut, cropped, added video effects, color boarded, and used transitions, we are going to correct the audio. Now, a really simple way to correct all of the audio on your footage in one go is to select all, Command A, and go over to the inspector menu and click the little speaker button. And it says it's inspecting 11 items. See how it says problems detected? You are gonna click that little magic wand next to the caution sign and it will fix the audio for you really automatically. It's that easy. You can play with all of the audio settings right here. I like to always have my noise removal all the way turned up. I like to also turn on the hum removal and I like to turn up the uniformity as well. And then equalization, I like to use the voice enhance setting. And then from here, I'm gonna check how loud my footage is. It's a little bit loud for the chewing, so I can turn the loudness down. Another really easy way to turn down the volume on all this is the volume button up here. So you can either play with all of the audio on the clip at once, or you can individually select each clip to edit the audio. You can also, from here, install voice effects or audio effects, which you can go down to this little effects menu. Go down to audio effects. You can use a lot of different things. You can use the telephone one, which I like to use sometimes on trailers, and you can overlay that. We can now add music. So music, I uploaded right here. I've imported all of that music that I've needed. Just going to drag this down and drop it. And then we are going to trim that music. There we go. Now we can play this clip with the music laid underneath it. And over here in the inspector, you can play with the volume of the music and stuff. Another way to adjust the volume is by clicking right here. See those arrows going up and down? You can lower and higher the music. So adding music is super easy. I think the hardest part is finding the music to add because you want to use copyright free stuff. But now let's say you want to create an introduction for your video. A lot of people have trailers and outros and things like that. I'm going to teach you how to create that. So let's say you want to use the same intro for a bunch of your videos or the same outro for a bunch of your videos. What you're going to want to do is start a new project. So I'm going to click Command N to bring up the new project. And let's say how to edit intro. That is going to bring up a whole new project. And let's say I want my intro to have some moving clouds and my logo and all that nice pretty stuff. So I am going to drag down this video of these clouds. And then I'm going to add my logo on top of it. My logo. You can see that's my logo. I want my logo to span the entire length of the cloud video. And let's say I want my logo to be smaller. I am going to click on it, go to transform in this menu. 
and shrink down the size. Now let's watch our introductory video. That's kind of cute, but let's say you don't have a logo and you just want to use some text. That's totally doable. You can go up here and click on this Titles and Generators menu. And we're going to go to Titles. There are a bunch of different types of titles. I like to use this Pixie Dust one because it's animated and cute and fun. So let's drop this Pixie Dust title. Now watch this, boom, brings that title up. Now you want to change all these elements. You don't want it to just say title. So you're going to go into the inspector over here and you're going to click this button. And under text, I can put uh, how to edit. But let's say I want to change the font. So you can go here, you can change pretty much everything about this text. You can change the size on the text, all sorts of things you can change on this, like it's the tracking. I can also change the color of the font by using the inspector menu. Use face, let's say I wanted it to be blue or yellow or purple or whatever. You can change the color down here. You can change the opacity so it can be as clear or as opaque as you want. You can also add outlines, you can add a drop shadow, you can remove the drop shadow, and you can change the color for all of these elements as well. You can make the drop shadow whatever color you want. Let's say I wanted to do a pink drop shadow. And you can play with all these functions and create all these different effects, text effects. So let's say this is how I want it to look. Let's say um, for every video you make, you use the same font in your title sequence. So you can go ahead and save all of the aspects of that font and the color and the drop shadow and all of that by going over to this little up and down arrow menu. And you can say, save all format and appearance attributes. So save all format how to edit title. And then when you go back and click on that, how to edit title will be a preset. There, I have other ones saved as well. So let's say I want it to look like my intro title. I can just select it really easily from here and it'll change it to those presettings. So now that you've changed the font, you can watch it in action. How to edit. If I wanted to change the background color on this animation, and let's say I wanted to make it the clouds, I could easily overlay this title on top of the clouds. So I'm going to drag this and put it right up here. And that will do this. If you wanted to do a plain background that's colored, we could do this. Go to Generators and pick any color or texture you want. Let's say I want pastel. You're going to lay that underneath. And then when you play it, it'll show up underneath that background. And then you can change the background color in the Inspector menu on this side, Sky Blue, Peach. Now let's watch our little intro. So let's say you get your intro to a place where you like it and you're done with it and you're like, okay, this looks good. I want to use it for all of my different clips now. Once you're done, what you're going to do is you're going to select all. You're going to right click and you are going to create new compound clip. Let's say how to edit intro. Boom, it condenses it into one little file. Now, I want to add that to the video I made earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this compound clip. I'm going to copy it by clicking Command C. And then I'm going to use this toggle feature right here. It's so powerful. It makes it really easy to switch in between projects. See, when I click that, my old project comes up. When I click this little arrow, the other project comes up. So I've copied that intro clip and what I'll do is I will place it and paste it 
into my clip by pushing Command V to paste. And now that introductory clip is in my video. And you can do the same exact thing for your outro. Basically create a new project, create the outro you want, turn it into a compound clip, and then paste it into your video project. So now your clip has an introduction, it's been edited, there's music. Let's say you wanted to add a watermark to your video. You are going to basically do the same thing as when you made the intro. You're gonna go find the watermark that you wanna add to your video. Let's say for me it's this logo. And you're going to drag that logo on top of the area that you wanna add the watermark to. So let's say I wanna watermark my entire video. I'm gonna stretch this to the entirety of my video. So now I have a watermark that's on my face. You can obviously change the size of your watermark by clicking it and clicking the transform option. You can shrink it down. You can also move it to whatever part of the screen I would like for it to appear. And you can also play with the watermark over here in the inspector. You can change the opacity. You can change all sorts of aspects about it. You can also even set your logo or watermark to transition out. So let's say drag that transition over and then I go play it, see how it fades out. That's because I added the transition. So now let's say you are finished with the entire video. You've created the intro, you've dropped it in, and now you want to export the video. And you can do it in a few file formats and there are some ways to save some time. When you are done with your project, you are gonna go to this final corner button up here that says share, it's a share button. And I've created these presets for export. So I can export directly to YouTube, I can export, just one frame, which means like a screenshot or a still of the footage. I can also export MP4. To create your export presets, you're gonna click Add Destination. So once you get to Add Destination, you can create a bunch of presettings for export. So to export an MP4, you want your format to be computer. Um, you can change your video codec to faster encoder, better quality. But let's say when I export, I want to export a bunch of things at once. Like let's say I want to upload to YouTube, create a screenshot, and export an MP4. What you're going to do is you're going to go to Bundle, and under Bundle, you are going to add some destinations. So I like to use Save Current Frame which basically takes a screenshot of your video. And for save current frame, you can choose whatever format. I like to use JPEG because it's smaller. And then I also want to add, let's say, export file with an MP4. Format's gonna be computer. Let's say I also want it to export to YouTube at the same time. I can add that YouTube and then it will bring up the sign in and everything. So you can, you can export directly to YouTube and this will happen in the order that you put it in. So let's say I want to export the video first. I would drag the export MP4 on top. I personally like to save my current frame first so that my picture renders before my video so that I can edit the screenshot and the thumbnail while my video is exporting. And then when I'm done, I can just click the share button, go down to screenshot MP4, the custom export bundle I made. Click that, bring up how to edit next, how to edit video, and it will share in that location. It says preparing media for share. And you can check on the status of your export by clicking this little circular button right here say background tasks and it's a sharing. When you expand that, it'll say pending export MP4 
and writing how to edit the JPEG. The JPEG or screen grab it's going to take is going to be on the frame that you've left it on. So let's say, so when I export, this is going to be the JPEG that's going to export. If I had the frame over here, this would be the JPEG that it's going to export. Now at this point, if you want to go back and take any more screen grabs, you would drag your player to the frame you want to capture. Go to export and click save current frame under the export options. Next. How to edit. So now your file is exporting and that is about it for how to edit. That's all she wrote folks. I have now taught you all of my efficiency tips and tricks and how to edit like a wizard. Thank you for joining me. If you've watched this all the way through, congrats. You are an effing champ. I hope that you learned a whole lot. It is literally everything that I know to make editing faster and go easier. If you found this video useful, feel free to like, subscribe, leave comments below. If I'm missing anything and there are any tips or tricks you want to teach me, leave them in the comments. If you have any questions, also leave that in the comments. And uh, yeah, join me next time for more hopefully useful content.